Kauffman Stadium on the campus of the University of Florida. The swamp is filled to capacity. The number one ranked Gators take on the Kentucky Wildcats. And hello, everyone. Welcome again to Gator Football on Sunshine. I'm David Steele, along with ex-Gator Nan Moore, and we're glad to have you with us again today. Well, the Gators coming off a very emotional win against Tennessee last week, Nat. Can they sustain that emotion today against a lesser team from Kentucky? Well, Steve Spurrier's biggest test today will be can he keep his team emotionally in this ball game? Last week they played Tennessee, everything was riding, it was easy. This week, the tendency is, after a big victory, to let down and think about the next opponent the following week, which is Arkansas. And hopefully, Steve will be able to do that today. Well, Nat, fortunately for the Gators, they are led by an experienced senior quarterback, Danny Werfel, who really seems to be able to keep this team on task every week. Well, Danny Werfel is like having a coach on the field. You know, he's a guy that he does nothing but win for you. He stays away from the turnovers. Last week, he was able to get four TDs. And that's what you got to have, a guy that's going to get your team in the victory column. Kentucky has a bit of a quarterback controversy. In fact, we may see a new starting quarterback today for the Wildcats. Well, Tim Couch last year was rated the best high school prospect at quarterback in the nation. And today he gets his opportunity, but it's against the Gators. Boy, a tough one, uh, tough start as a quarterback for a freshman, Tim Couch, if he is the starting quarterback for the Wildcats today. Let's check on the sideline now with Larry Battelle. Larry? Well, David, the Florida Gators have really dominated this rivalry of late. In fact, they've won nine in a row in 15 out of 16. So do they respect Kentucky? Well, I promise you the Gators seniors do, and with good reason. It was in 1993, just three years ago, when the Florida Gators needed this touchdown pass from Danny Werfel to Chris Doring with three seconds to go to escape Commonwealth Stadium with a victory. The Florida seniors were freshmen on that 93 team, and I can promise you they've been telling the younger players all week long just what can happen between the Gators and the Wild. Wildcats. David? Thanks, Larry. The Gators try to avoid a letdown, taking on Kentucky. The opening kick coming up. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium and the number one ranked Florida Gators preparing to take on Kentucky. The Gators 3-0, ranked number one in the nation. And uh, is Steve Spurrier, the head coach of the Florida Gators, nervous about uh, trying to keep his team on top? Nat Moore, well... Well, this is how you burn off that nervous energy. You go out here, get a little workout in, show your players that you're working the same way you want them to work. 51-year-old head coach of the Florida Gators, a little bit earlier today. Don't look bad for 51, no, does he's it? doing pretty good, I would say. Coach Furrier, an incredible one-loss record uh, overall, 64-13-1 since 1990 with the Gators. There you see the weather for today in a very humid September afternoon. Kentucky kicking off. Tobin Anderson doing the honors, and this is Redell Anthony from the one-yard line. Anthony breaking a tackle. Fumbles the football, and let's see. I think Demetrius Lewis, number 38, fell on top of it for Florida. Senior quarterback Danny Werfel out of Fort Walton Beach. A leading candidate now for the Heisman Trophy after his performance last week against the Tennessee Volunteers. He threw four touchdown passes with no interceptions. Florida's offense led by uh, that great receiving tandem of Anthony and Hilliard. Get great running from Eli Williams. Fred Taylor will get a shot today at the tailback as well on the offensive line. Cooper Carlisle starting at that left tackle spot instead of Mo Collins. There have been questions about Collins' eligibility this week. And Collins is not going to be in uniform today for the Florida Gators. Lamont Smith on the stop for Kentucky, the linebacker, putting the skids on Eli Williams. As you look at Kentucky's defense, Kurt Soupy, a very talented player on uh, the left end, the senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. A good group of linebackers led by Mike Schellenberger, the senior from Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, an experienced defensive backfield led by Lehman Boyd, who had 16 tackles last week against Indiana. Anthony, who had the big game last week in Knoxville, on the receiving end of a whirlpool pass and is out of bounds at the 34-yard line of the Wildcats, a 34-yard pickup. A tremendous throw and run after the catch by Riddell Anthony as he veered inside, and then as he caught the ball, came back outside, picked up all his blocking. Here you see Werfel going back. Now watch Riddell. He starts inside, sees that he's got blocking outside, does it just a good job of getting upfield as you see the blockers coming to your pitcher. Good job of running after the catch. 
Anthony is uh, lined up in the slot to the left side as Werfel drops back on first down. All alone is Hilliard. Ike Hilliard to the 10 and Hilliard touchdown Florida. Well there you go again. You're talking about the dynamic duel of Riddell Anthony and Ike Hilliard. They both run well after the catch as you've seen the running ability of Ike Hilliard. They're going in for six. One minute and three seconds into this game. Florida has already scored a touchdown. Well, it's nothing but a simple in route, and here's here's just Riddell Anthony showing that blazing speed, and it's just a great move, getting outside and then diving for the touchdown. Boy, don't be late to the swamp. You might miss uh, a season highlight film. Fans are just uh, still settling in here in Gainesville, and Florida is already on the scoreboard. Bart Edmiston will attempt the extra point. There's a flag down as Edmiston drills it, but will hold up and check it out. And it looks like the penalty is going to be against Kentucky for being offside. So Bart Edmiston continues uh, his school record point after touchdown performance. He's hit 91 in a row. Let down in Gainesville. Well, doesn't look so early. Florida leads seven to nothing. We'll be back. Only a minute, three seconds into the football game, but Florida is already on top of Kentucky. Let's take another look at the touchdown, Nat. They just caught him in a little zone route, and you know, here's what you like about these uh, receivers here for the Gators, that they all run well after the catch, as you see them picking up their blockers downfield. Danny Werfel with that touchdown pass. That is the 83rd of his career, and I kill your... His fourth touchdown reception of the season is 23rd overall. There's a, a brief summary of the touchdown drive, which was a very brief touchdown drive. <laughs> Matt Teague will kick off for Florida. And Keo Sanford is deep to return alongside number 35, Harold Dennis. Matt Teague doing a good job booming it deep into the end zone. And that's where uh, Kentucky will bring it out to the 20-yard line. So Teague has really, he's been very effective this season in kicking off. Uh, that's his 10th touchback of the season in 27 kickoff. Nice percentage. Tim Couch is the starting quarterback. And the freshman put up some incredible numbers as a uh, high school player in Hyden, Kentucky. So we'll see what happens here in the swamp. Offensive line, Chris Comstock. The most talented member of that group out of Apopka, Florida. Kentucky running the ball on first down. Javon Kurse makes the stop on Raymond McLaren. Well, that is days, I should say, getting the call at the starting tailback, the freshman from Lake City, Florida. We continue on with Florida's defense. Bo Champ and Cohen's on the ends. And the tackles Chester and McGrew. Very talented group as well as the linebackers, Rutledge, the senior Bates, and the redshirt freshman, Javon Kurse. Defensive backfield, veteran group, Weary, and lot on the corners, right, Pico Brown, the safeties. This is Days, the freshman who was in a high school uniform last season, tackled by James Bates. There's Days, 5'8", 195 pounder out of Columbia County High School. Carried the ball last week, Nat, against Indiana for 92 yards, so he's got his first chance to start. Well, here you see the first two plays. They start one direction, and you see him cut back, trying to come out of the backside, and you know, the Gators did a good job of staying at home. The freshman back to throw on third down and five. He's got a lot of room out in front of him, but he's going to throw the football, and it's picked off by Fred Weary. Fred Weary, the junior from Jacksonville, his fourth interception of the season. And Couch, the freshman, is picked off in the swamp. Florida football. Well, that's a freshman mistake because Fred Weary was there. He's sitting back. He's giving him the, the look that he can fit it in. And this is what happens when you have a strong arm, David. You feel like you can always get it in. And here he tries to get it, fit it in. And there you see Fred Weary stepping in front and picking it off. Fred Weary, what a season the junior is having. 
Another interception. And Florida has the football in good field position, scoring position for this Gator attack. As the fullback, Jerome Evans is the ball carrier. Mike Schellenberger, senior from Louisville, in on the stop. That'll be a gain of three or four. Well, that Gator defense has just been a big play all year long, Nat, through the first part of this season. Well, that's that was the reason that Steve Spurrier went out and hired Bobby Stoops to bring him in to add some excitement to this defense, and they've done a tremendous job so far. Play action, and this is Hilliard, and the pass is overthrown. Mike pretty well covered by Lehman Boyd. Well, he had he had a step, but it would have been a perfect pass. You know, Danny just overshot him a little bit there, but uh, you know that's what you want to see. You want to see this Gator off offense open back up. Uh, last week they sort of choked it down in the second half. After getting a big 35 to nothing lead, the the complexion of that game turned for both teams, obviously, Nat. Well, they just didn't want to do anything to put Tennessee back in the ball game, and I admire that. Uh, they didn't worry about trying to blow them out. They did what they needed to do to win the game, and it was enough to get them into the number one ranking. Penalty flag down. There was movement on Florida's offensive front. An area of continual concern, I'm sure, for the Gator coaching staff. They've been heavily, heavily penalized ball, teams. Ball start. Offense. Still third down. Doyle Jackson. Well, you see Carlisle you know, in his first start. A uh, little jump there, number 70. Hard to sit in there. You know, you're a little over anxious when you're getting your first start. You want to make something happen, you want to show the coach you belong. Barna now, third down and 11. Werfel, good protection. Jacques Green is able to make the catch, but he's going to be about five yards short of a first down at Kentucky's 21-yard line. And Werfel looking to the sideline, and it appears that uh, the Gators will go for three points in this situation, unlike last week when on fourth and 11 at Tennessee's 35-yard line, Spurrier went for the end zone, and Werfel connected with Redell Anthony. Well, Werfel's a little disappointed. He had him open, had... Uh... Plenty of time to get him the ball, give him a chance to get turned up field to get the first down. He just threw it so high he had to go up and come down. Bart Edmiston will attempt a 39-yard field goal. It is in the air, and the kick is good. Bart Edmiston, only his fifth field goal attempt of the season, but he's made good on three of them, and Florida leads Kentucky 10 to nothing. The University of Florida will host the 1997 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships April 17th through the 19th. If you like ticket information, call 1-800-34-GATOR today. They're the deep men, Sanford and Dennis and Teague will kick off for the Florida Gators. Matt Teague boomed one into the end zone on his last attempt. He's a senior from nearby Keystone Heights, Florida. Gators have jumped all over Kentucky early on. We've played still less than four minutes in this football game. Well, you better be ready to play when you take on this Florida <laughs> football team. Matt. Well, we talked about uh, worrying if they would have an emotional letdown, but so far they come to play here today. This is Dennis, and Dennis brings the ball out to the 20-yard line. The tackle made by John X. Nitus for the Florida Gators. So, freshman quarterback Tim Couch, who was intercepted on Kentucky's first possession. And there you see what uh, the freshman sensation has done so far. This kid threw for over 12,000 yards. This is almost unimaginable. 12,000 yards in high school, Matt, and 133 touchdowns. And that's when you say, who was he playing against? <laughs> but when you put up those kind of numbers, it doesn't matter who you're playing against. I mean, uh, on an empty field, <laughs> those would be tough numbers. Johnny Rutledge makes the hit. Number 58, the sophomore from Belle Glade. Raymond McLaurin, now the running back at uh, tailback for Kentucky. Here's a good look down low as you see McLaurin going up in there, and you see Johnny Rutledge coming in for the stop. Javon Kurtz coming in for the assist. McLaurin, number 21 for Kentucky, a red shirt, uh, well, a fifth-year senior, did not start the game because freshman Michael Days got the nod. Here's a little option. 
Counts will keep the ball and Counts is dumped to the turf by Wright and Cameron Davis. Well, they just did a good job of stringing this play out as they tried to run the option play. And, you know, as you'll see, Tim Couch, will come out. He's, he's running the option, but they just do a good job of stretching it out. Lawrence Wright staying at home, not giving him anywhere to pitch the football. Cameron Davis out of Water Hill. Really in a battle with Willie Cohen's at the starting uh, position on that end. Two very talented football players and if you're a Gator fan you got to appreciate the depth of this football team this year especially on that defensive front line. Couch scrambling. That'll bring up a fourth down play for Kentucky and their punt team is coming on. Well Couch showed me some athletic ability that time as he pumped fake got the defender in the air and stepped around him tried to buy time to give his receivers a chance to get open and wisely threw it into in the dirt knowing that they were covered. Back to punt the ball is Jimmy Carter out of Dunwoody Georgia and Riddell Anthony the junior out of Belglade Florida is deep to return for the Gators. Gators put on a rush. Left footed Carter hits it off the side of his foot. And the ball is out of bounds at the 47 yard line a 34 yard punt by Jimmy Carter. Nine minutes and 20 seconds to play. We're still in the first quarter from Gainesville and the Gators off in the Wildcats. First quarter action Southeastern Conference battle between Florida and Kentucky. The Gators have won nine consecutive meetings and head coach uh, Bill Curry has never experienced a, a victory against the Florida Gators with his Kentucky Wildcat ball club. Both Spurrier and Curry the two head coaches are in their seventh year at their respective schools. The Gators first down at Kentucky's 30 yard line. Werfel dumps it off to Fred Taylor making his first appearance of the season. Taylor served down his four game suspension in only three games. He got back uh, one game early and there's uh, Taylor's first action of the season. Just a little check down they fake the draw and just found the open area and Werfel finds him and this is what they miss with Fred Taylor. He's always fighting for those extra yardage. And as you saw there an excellent receiver as well as runner. Here's a deep throw for Green. Jack has Green makes the catch touchdown Florida. That was a tremendous catch there David. The ability to know that you're going to get hit. He was able to hang in there as we see Danny Werfel down on the on the turf as he took a big hit as he released that football. But great concentration by Jaquez Green. And there's a flag down as uh, Werfel was unnecessarily roughed up. Now I think they're going to call that back. Look like they're calling holding. Oh I thought it might have been roughing on Kentucky but you're right. Let's take another look and see if we can see the hole. That was holding by the offense, which will be penalized from the spot of the hole. Well, there's the hit coming in late at number 22. Alley. Here we see another look at it. Got a good job. There you see the hole of it on Carlisle, but then here's Alley coming in late with the big hit. That should have been called. Mm. Take the touchdown away. Wildcat stars the bullet. Werfel goes right back to the air. Taylor swing pass. Jukes a couple. Still on his feet across the 35 of the 33 yard line of the Wildcats. Didi Ali finally makes the stop. The junior from Mariana, Florida. Well, Number 22. Well, Fred Taylor just, you know, he uses that 222 pound frame so well. As you can see, he continues to keep his legs pumping at all time when the ball's in his hand, and he's just a tough guy to bring down. Here you see him avoiding would-be tackles, and watch him keep his feet moving. He's just running over people, picking up extra yardage. A couple of receptions already today for Taylor. He's got 37 career receptions now. Orful, oh, a dangerous pass thrown into double coverage. Intended for Hilliard. Lamont Smith, a linebacker, dropped back deep there and uh, had good coverage. 
had good coverage, uh, almost a double coverage seemed like. Uh, linebacker got good deep, good deep drop. You know, Werfel's trying to get rid of the football. He's starting to feel a little pressure in the pocket there. As you can see, just as he releases the ball, once again, he's being hit by Chris Ward. Barna has been very efficient in fourth down conversions. They made those work last week in Knoxville. This is fourth down and 13. Werfel throwing it, and it is incomplete. I'm not sure who the intended receiver was on that one, but Kentucky will take over the football at their own 33-yard line. So the Gators are thwarted in their third offensive series. They scored a touchdown on their first possession, a field goal on their second, appeared to have another touchdown, but it was called back due to a hold. So Kentucky takes over the football. There's uh, Couch and those numbers I talked about earlier. Now you see them graphically, which really brings them home, doesn't it? Very impressive high school star, recruited by the University of Florida. In fact, Florida was one of his final choices. Big Javon Kirsch all over Raymond McLaren in the backfield. Well, this is the third time that the running back has tried to come back out the backside, start one way, and come back out the backside, and the linebackers have all stayed at home as you see Javon Kirsch coming in for the tackle. Good defensive play by the Gators. Another big hit for Kirsch. That's his fourth tackle behind the line of scrimmage this year. Here's the quick toss to Days and the freshman from Lake City, Florida. They have gotten back to the line of scrimmage for James Bates, the senior from Sevierville, Tennessee, makes the stop. Well, David, this defense just seemed to be aware of everything that Kentucky is trying to do to him. They tried to run a little quick screen. Bates smelled it out, and they were over there. They were in the pursuit lanes, nowhere for the, the, the back to run. It appears as if we have an injured player. Willie Cohens is limping off the field. Kentucky faced with a third down and eight. There's Big Willie, 6'3", 255. Push your shutter a little bit when you see a guy like Cohens come off. He had knee surgery back in mid-August. But he's also the strongest player on this Gator football team. And that's saying something. There's penalty flags fly again. Kentucky in uh, motion, it would appear. Bill Curry. Foul is a dead ball. Ball starts. Offense. Still third down. You look at the top of your screen, you should see the right tackle move a little early. Number 64. Jonas Lining trying to get an early start, trying to protect that young quarterback. Couch from the shotgun on third and 17. Down goes the freshman. Tim Bochamp, Cameron Davis combine on the sack, and Kentucky will have to punt the ball away again. Well, you give the credit to Cameron Davis and Tim Bochamp, but let's give that entire... Gator defensive front wall, a lot of credit for just pushing this, this offensive line back where he's got nowhere to run. Cameron Davis has been in and out of that Gator lineup throughout his career. Really enjoying a fine senior season. Wouldn't it be a great year for him to finish his senior year as national champion? Carter, low line drive kick. Riddell Anthony from the 39. Anthony, a big burst of speed. Finally taken down at Kentucky's 40. They say, I think he stepped out of bounds at the 42-yard line. A 38-yard punt. And a 16-yard return for Riddell Anthony and Danny Warfel. The senior who holds 30 records, uh, whether it be UF, SEC, NCAA, 30 records in college football to his credit. We're in the swamp, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, David Steele, Nat Moore, Sunshine Network, and the Florida Gators out to a quick start. They scored on their third play from scrimmage. 
on their very first possession, added a field goal, had a touchdown called back already. That sounds like an entire game for many teams, but only 10 minutes of action so far for Florida as Ike Hilliard picks up about 11 yards on an end around. Didi Ali makes the stop for Kentucky. I tell you, I am just amazed at the plays that Steve Furrier come up with. You come out five wide, and then you run a <laughs> run a, a receiver in motion and run a wing back. A wing back play to the uh, <laughs> to the receiver. I mean, I'm lost for words. Have trouble even describing what it is. Oh, Macro, I tell you, you talking about playing some fun football. This is fun and guts. Wide open is Jacques Green. Kentucky corners him and knocks him out of bounds. Lehman Boyd, number 15, on the stop for the Wildcats is Green. You don't want to let him get uh, loose. He's got great, great speed, and Kentucky kept him contained that time. Well, I like what Danny Werfel does here. He's trying to get the ball to Ike Hilliard in the corner, but the Wildcat defense sitting back in the zone. He comes off to Jack Harris Green knowing that he's got him out there as an outlet. Good, smart play, quarterback play by Danny Werfel. Total yards uh, totally one-sided at this point. Werfel on a pump fake and then a throw. Touchdown. It's Riedel Anthony once again for the Florida Gators. His second touchdown catch of the game. That was just a beautiful touch pass by Danny Werfel as he threw it up and over, just leading his receiver, Riedel Anthony, outside. Just a tremendous throw. You know, most quarterbacks in college cannot make this type of throw. They all got the gun, but the touch that he shows here as he goes up and over, just a beautiful, beautiful pass. And good catch. Impossible to defend. The spot that Danny threw the ball, just impossible to knock away. Danny Werfel just uh, matched a pretty good ball player, Jim McMahon. 84 touchdown throws in their careers. And that puts him, what, number five all time? Did you say he's a pretty good football pretty player, good football Jim football McMahon? Player. Not bad. Well, for my money, Jim McMahon was a great football player as he led his Chicago Bears to the Super Bowl championship back in 1985. Werfel in good company in the NCAA record books has taken Florida down the field again, and the Gators are out to a 17 to nothing lead. Here's another look. As you can see, Riddell Anthony just does a good job of you know, knowing what he wants to do. He's covered, he uncovers, and he just goes to the open spot. Danny Werfel finds him. Just the way you draw it up in the sand. <laughs> Great timing on the play. Excellent execution. Werfel now 10 of 14 in this first quarter. Already 148 yards passing. A pair of touchdowns and still has not thrown an interception this season. Right. You look at the scoring drive very quick again three plays 39 yards. And usually that's what happens when you've got a short field you give a good team like the Gators a short field and they're going to score more times than not. Well the field position has been all Florida. Manti kicking off and uh, that is Sanford and he'll down the football. Kentucky takes over at its own 20. Let's go to the sideline and Larry. Larry? Okay, David. Right now, the Florida Gators working on the right knee of Willie Cohens. This is a guy who missed the early part of the season due to an injury to his knee. Well, he has injured his right knee again. It is a sprain right now. They're going to hold him out at least until halftime, evaluate the severity of that sprain. But Willie Cohens' day may be done. A frustrating early part of the season for the sophomore out of Stark Bradford County. Well, Willie had uh, surgery on that knee on the 16th of August and missed the first couple of games played last week against Tennessee Michael Day is the ball carrier stopped by Javon Kurse a gain of two well, Kentucky's just trying to get some running room as they run days up on that right side but uh, there's no room there and you know what you're trying to do and, and what coach Curry would like to do is to establish some type of running game to take some pressure off this young quarterback. Maybe run the clock a little bit as well. The worst thing you could do is keep 
turning the ball back over to Florida's fun and gun. Days again the ball carrier, but there is nowhere to run up the middle between those tackles. Bochamp was there with a lot of help. The young man Michael Days from right down the street in Lake City would like to have a big ball game similar to what he had last week against Indiana. 22 rushes for 92 yards, but not against this skater defense. You see him running into the pit, and there's just nothing there. Ed Chester, sophomore, really has come on strong in his second college football season. Played uh, in spots last year and showed the signs of what he was going to be all about, but he has really blossomed in his sophomore season. Flags down. And I'm not sure, but I think Kentucky failed to get the snap off in time. That's the call against the Wildcats and another setback for Bill Curry. Foul is a dead ball. Delay of game by the offense. Five yards previous spot. Third down. So it's back to the drawing board for uh, Tim Couch and company. As a sellout crowd at Florida Field looks on. Florida leads Kentucky 17 to nothing. Late in the first quarter. Couch has protection this time, but he cannot find his receiver. And Kentucky, once again, will have to turn the ball over to the Florida Gators. That was a pass intended for another freshman, Quentin McCord, and the two freshmen fail to connect. Well, Fred McCord... Fred Wary had him covered like a blanket, and... Uh, Couch did the, the sharp thing. He threw it back outside where if anybody could catch it, it would only be his receiver, McCord, because Fred Ware is all over him. Riddell Anthony once again deep to receive. Jimmy Carter, who punted the ball eight times against Florida last year, and Lexington is going to get a workout, it would appear, again today. A flag is thrown. After a 44-yard punt by Jimmy Carter, Schellenberger on the stop for Kentucky. Bill Curry, his team one and two coming in. And a penalty against Florida. Foul was holding during the return, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Every week we talk about the penalties and uh, how much that upsets a head coach. And, you know, those are the things that you work all week to try and get correct, to get them cleaned up, because some penalties are just senseless. And you know that when you play a tougher opponent, you, you will not get away with giving away those cheap penalties. off is to Terry Jackson. Jackson stepping along the sideline before he finally is moved out of bounds at the 41-yard line by Schellenberger, a 23-yard run by the sophomore from Gainesville. Well, David, we talk about all of the depth at the wide receiver slots, but when you can run Williams, Jackson, and now Taylor back in the lineup, you're talking about loaded at the tailback position. The Gators are loaded. Well, all three of those individuals have not been either healthy or all eligible since early last season, I think. <laughs> so to have all three of them stacked up and available is uh, very impressive. It gives him, Steve Spurrier a lot of options. Gives him a lot of options, but it also gives him a lot of headaches with these guys all wanting to play. All quality backs. Van Hiles on the stop for the Wildcats. The ball spotted at the 33-yard line is once again Florida is marching the ball up the field. And that's what we want to see here today. Last week, as we said earlier, they choked it down in the second half. You know, Spurry would like to get this offense clicking on all cylinders. We have not seen that potent offense, Florida offense, like we saw last year, and you know, this is a time to get healthy. Here's the injured player, Van Hiles, the man who made the tackle, a senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 
A lot of experience in that uh, Kentucky secondary with Hiles and Lehman Boyd. Tony Woods, who was a starter last year at one corner. Travis McGriff on the catch. And McGriff will have a Florida first down as Woods, number 29, is there to make the tackle. Travis did not catch a ball last week at Knoxville. That was his eighth reception of the season. Well, this Kentucky team, even though they're a bad team, uh, defensively, they do come after. You see everybody flowing to the football. There's no quit in this football team. As you see, Danny Werfel comes out. It's Travis McGriff. But watch all of the white shirts that come into your picture here. And an entire defensive football team trying to get in on the tackle. Werfel, an audible call. On first and ten from the Kentucky 26-yard line. And he's got single coverage with Green, and Jock has Green made a fine catch at the six-yard line. Put coverage there. You can't say enough about the job Tony Woods did, but Green just fought him for the football. Well, Jock has Green just went up over him and said that this is my football. I want it better than you do, and took it away. You know, we we always talk about Jacquez's speed, but he's shown us tremendous leaping ability game after game, coming up with big catches. There you see Werfel. Pumping in the pocket. And then he falls down. He didn't get a really good hit that bad that time. The pass intended for McGriff on a quick slant. And it'll be second down and goal. Well, he had him open. It was just a little bit behind him as he tried to hit McGriff on the quick slant. Travis had a step. No huddle offense. Look at that efficiency inside the 20. Give the ball to Jackson. And a good defensive play there. The stop made by big number 47, Chris Ward, the senior from Decatur. And that'll bring up a third down and goal situation for the Florida Gators. Well, Chris Ward just does a good job of fighting off Tremaine. And there you see a little help by Mobley, but he refused to be blocked. As you see, comes in for the... Tell you what, that was close. It could have been ruled a fumble. Gators got a break. Ward, a veteran player, making his 20th Southeastern Conference uh, start today. Warple with no running backs behind him, rolling right. And the pass thrown too high for McGriff to bring it in. I don't think he had anywhere to go, even if he does make the catch with Hiles right there on top of him. So the field goal team for the Gators is coming on. Well, Danny's been a little high with quite a few passes here today, and you know, we talked about uh, how much time Danny has been spending in the weight room lately, getting stronger, and usually those are the passes you have a problem with, the little short passes where you get more thrust on it and the ball rises. 27-yard field goal try by Edmiston. A low-line drive is through the uprights, and Florida tacks on three more with 10 seconds to play in the first quarter. Number one ranked Florida leads Kentucky 20 to nothing. Well, and more on the top of the broadcast, we talked about a possible letdown for this Florida football team, but they have controlled the line of scrimmage. They've hit big plays offensively. The defense has surrendered yardage grudgingly. And it appears that Florida is well prepared to defend its number one ranking at least this week. Well, they're prepared, but uh, David, we'd really like to see them put a few more touchdowns on the board. You know, they've been down there twice. They've had to sell for field goals. And, you know, against a team like Kentucky, you expect to put put some touchdowns on the board and usually this is a team that when they get inside the 20 yard line they're scoring touchdowns and not field goals. Well you sound like the head coach right now. Well I just know how Steve feels. Uh, I've been around some great coaches and Steve Furry is also a great coach and you know Don Shuley used to always talk about when we get inside of the 20 yard line we've got to score touchdowns not field goals. Florida has had to settle for a, a pair of field goals in the first quarter. They still lead 20 to nothing. Matt Teague again booming one deep. And uh, once again, Kentucky will have to down the football. That's the third time that Teague has uh, forced Kentucky 
into a touchback situation. Let's check with Larry Vitell. All right, thanks a lot, David. We talked at the top of the telecast about Tim Couch, the highly recruited quarterback who turned down the likes of Ohio State and Florida and Tennessee to choose to stay in state and play for the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, what Tim Couch has learned is it might be easier to get playing time in Lexington, but it's a lot tougher to win ball games, a learning process on the road, and a very painful one for the freshman from Kentucky. Thanks, Larry. No doubt this young man has uh, a lot of physical ability. Rutledge on the stop. But, uh, you know, the thing is, like Larry just pointed out, is uh, getting to play one, uh, you know, in a Southeastern Conference game is one thing, but trying to be effective in an SEC game is totally different. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll be right back to Florida Field in Gainesville. Through the years, the University of Florida women's athletics has established itself among the nation's elite. Within the Southeastern Conference, simply dominant. Whether measured by team or individual title, Olympic medals or academic honors, the Gators set the pace. Experience all the grace and skill that is Gator Gymnastics, one of only two programs to qualify for every national championship. And don't miss NCAA drama as the nation's best come to Gator country this April. Join us in celebration of 25 years of women's athletic excellence, a silver anniversary of a golden tradition. See this label? This is the Gatorade. Look under the label for a chance to win SEC Championship tickets label. The Rush to the Sidelines label. Meaning two tickets. The Georgia Dome, the game, live instant SEC gratification. And a chance to be on the sidelines. The field. Any closer, you'd need mandatory life insurance. Feel the magnetos. This is big. Life is a sport. Drink it up. They're coming to Gainesville to get floored, flipped, and beamed up. And you're invited to get a grip on the best seats in the house. Tickets are available now for the 1997 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship coming to O'Connell Center at the University of Florida April 17th through 19th. For ticket information, call 352-375-4683. I'm Gary Carter, and you're watching Sunshine Network. We played one quarter of football from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on the campus of the University of Florida. Number one ranked Florida leads Kentucky 20 to nothing as we go to the second quarter. Look at the number of players on the Kentucky roster from the Sunshine State. Total of 26, Nat Moore, and that uh, as a former Florida high school product and uh, a collegian here at the University of Florida, that's not a surprise to you, is it? That's not a surprise. The state of Florida has the best high school football in the country, and any college would like to come in here and recruit. And Kentucky has done that, just that, effectively for many years now. First quarter numbers are ugly. If you're a Wildcat, and beautiful thing if you're a Gator. And the freshman, Tim Couch, trying to make something happen with little option action there, and Rutledge... Once again is there to make the tackle along with Fred Weary. What a tough situation. Tim Couch thrust into the starting quarterback job at Kentucky. Well, as we watch the, uh, the freshman operate here. But really Bill Curry has been uh, under a lot of pressure to get this guy into the starting lineup. Well, I, and, and it's a, I think a very inopportune time for him to have to start. As we look at Tico Brown that's uh, down injured. But you know when you take a young guy with so much promise and you put him into a fight like this with the Florida Gators you know two things can happen one you can build a self esteem or two you can destroy it uh, sometimes you like to take a guy like that and bring him along slowly knowing that you've got him for three or four years well it's been a tough start so far for Tim Couch as we look at uh, the injured Florida player Tico Brown we'll be right back in just a moment We're back in Gainesville, Florida. Kentucky will have the football as play resumes. Tico Brown, Florida's free safety, was injured. Let's take a look at uh, what happened to Brown. That there you see Jason Watts hitting him on his left knee or left leg with Quentin McCord coming in at the top. And, you know, there you see Tico Brown, who's been a stalwart on this defense, being uh, helped off. There's a live shot of uh, Brown walking. That's a good sign on his own volition on the Florida sideline so we'll get an update on Tico's condition as soon as possible. 
There's Mike Harris. Now the three safety in that Florida lineup. The junior from Gainesville. Very experienced player. Florida has a lot of depth this year. This is Steve Spurrier's deepest, probably his most talented football team since coming to Florida as uh, the head coach in 1990. Almost picked off, and Javon Kirst knows he had six points if he can pull it in. Well, I tell you, Javon Kirst is just amazing. Here's a red shirt freshman that just always seemed to be in the right play and around the football as he came close to picking that off and just striding into the end zone. Hit him in a bad place, Nat. Let's check with Larry Vitell. Larry? Okay, David, Tico Brown has sprained the medial collateral ligament in his knees going into the locker room. He is done for the day, as is Willie Cohen's. They will be evaluated, probably an MRI early in the week to see the extent of the damage. Very serious injury for this Florida football team. That would be uh, very serious to lose both of those players. Of course, it's premature to assume that either one would not play next week against Arkansas. A beautiful return by Reed L. Anthony, but uh, there was a flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. So let's go wait and see about that. 47-yard kick by Jimmy Carter, a 30-yard return for Anthony, who's having a splendid day returning kicks against Kentucky. Well, that time, Riddell Anthony, once he turned it upfield, just decided to split the defenders and really turned on the speed. Bill Curry that was watching his team fall behind early. By the kicking team, which is declined first down. So Florida gets the ball in great field position at Kentucky's 43-yard line. And it appears that we have uh, an official's timeout. Referee Doyle Jackson just signaled. Made that signal. And Florida with that 20 to nothing lead and really has totally dominated this football game up to this point, man. Well, they've been, been able to dominate this ball game offensively, defensively, as well as special teams. And uh, contrary to what you say, David, they have uh, put some points on the board, but not as much as I'd like. I'm an offensive player. You'd like to see them get touchdowns every time, and they've had to settle for a couple of field goals so far in this game. Well, look for especially Mark Gatorade with the rush to the sidelines for a chance to win tickets to the SEC championship instantly. For more details or free entry, call 1-800-88-GATOR. Gatorade Thirst Quencher, life is a sport, drink it up. Well, I think the point you make, and you do take Spurrier's perspective, Nat, is that uh, there is such a high standard for this Florida football team right now that to score 20 points in the first quarter against an SEC opponent is not necessarily good enough. It's not good enough when you've dominated the football game, and uh, this is not a top-notch SEC football team. Now, when you get down inside the 20-yard line and you're playing on your opponent's side of the 50-yard line, you expect to score touchdowns. And that man right there sets a very high standard for himself and the football team, Danny Werfel. 24-4-1 as a starting quarterback at UF. Hands off to Jackson. Terry dragging defenders with him. Very tough man to bring down. Andre Smith, a junior from Decatur, Georgia. Got about an eight-yard ride on the back of Jackson. Terry picked up about eight yards. Well, that's what you do when you get a big back like Jackson coming through there. You just grab on and hold on for dear life and hope that some of your teammates come in to help you. Just good, tough running by Willie Jackson. I mean, excuse me. Uh, Terry Jackson. Uh, there's Terry again. Willie's younger brother. High stepping across the 30. Picking up another Florida first down. Tremaine Martin, number 26. On the stop for Kentucky. Well, that Jackson family really has uh, produced some tremendous athletes. You look at Terry's numbers. Last year against Kentucky, had a big game up in Lexington. He's got 35 rushing yards already today. Jackson again. 
good blocking along the right side of that Florida offensive line and Terry Jackson to the Kentucky 20 yard line. Jeff Snedeker makes the stop for the Wildcats. I tell you David the thing that uh, Terry Jackson does well especially for all you young guys at home that would like to be running back is look what he does every time he gets the ball if he has to make a move outside he takes that quick dart outside and then he's right back upfield north and south. Well, no wasted effort on Terry Jackson's part. Very versatile player. Played on the defensive side of the ball early in the season when Florida had some injury problems. Orful is rattled as he throws the football and the pass is incomplete. Jeff Tanner, big senior from Mariana, Florida, number 55, putting the pressure on Danny Werfel. Along with Snedeker, number 48. Well, Jeff Tanner gets there just as he's trying to unload the ball to Tremaine Allen, his tight end, out in the flat. Good job by uh, the freshmen. A lot of freshmen on this Kentucky team. Jackson is hit at the line of scrimmage on third down and two. He'll be short of the first down as Mike Schellenberger solid defensive player on that Kentucky linebacking core is there to make the tackle a senior from Louisville. This guy has really been an impressive uh, student athlete at Kentucky 3.8 grade point average in finance. There you see number 49 stuff to play in Florida is looking at fourth down and uh, about two yards and they're going to go for the first down. And a handoff up the middle, and Jackson picks up the necessary yardage. Keo Wilson came up to make the stop, the free safety for the Wildcats. First and 10, Florida. This play is made possible by this good lead block by Jerome Evans, number 34, as he clears the way for, Willie Jack for Terry Jackson. Excuse me, I got the Willie Jacksons today. I keep thinking about his dad. Terry Jackson. Good tough running for first down. Danny Werfel again audibleizing at the line. And he's got Anthony with a lot of room out there. He's a dangerous man in the open field. Riddell Anthony, touchdown, Florida. That young man's third touchdown of the game. Tremendous running once again after the catch, but a great block by Ike Hilliard to get him into the end zone. Just a quick pop pass out here in the flat. And then Riddell Anthony does his thing. Says, Watch those moves. Just good, quick feet. There's the big block by Ike Hilliard. And then tremendous running, diving for the touchdown. Officially Riddell Anthony's uh, second touchdown of the game and his fourth touchdown of this season. Edmiston on to attempt another extra point. And the kick is good. So Florida tacks on another seven points. And the top ranked Florida Gators are rolling in Gainesville. It is 27 to nothing with still almost 11 minutes to play in the half. We're back in Gainesville at the Swamp in Florida, all over Kentucky in this first half, and it has been a situation of total domination in this football game. Here's another look at Florida's latest touchdown. Well, when you have a great passing attack, that means that your receivers work well together. They block for each other downfield. They run complimentary routes to get each other open, and the Gators do that exceptionally well. Fredell had five catches last week in Knoxville. Two touchdown receptions already today. You look at uh, the deep men for Kentucky. That is uh, Keo Sanford, number six, and Harold Dennis, number 35. And Matt Teague handling the kickoff responsibilities again. He's forced uh, Kentucky into touchbacks three times already today. Pretty impressive uh, numbers for this guy. Danny Werfel. As Teague kicks him deep again. Once again, Kentucky will have to bring the football out to the 20-yard line as this young man uh, prepares to 
try his luck again with this Florida defense. Very tough situation for a young freshman right out of high school. Tell you that when you bring freshmen into the swamp with this Florida football team, you're going to be in trouble. Well, he gets his baptism today, without a doubt, here in the swamp. That's a little play action. And the pass is incomplete. I'm not sure if it was intended for the tight end, uh, Isaac Curtis, or the other tight end, Chad Spencer. Both were in the area. Join Sunshine Network Saturday morning at 10 for SEC TV Weekly, the weekly series on Southeastern Conference Athletics. Visits Auburn University this week. We'll take a comprehensive look at upcoming matchups in the Southeastern Conference. SEC TV Weekly, Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on Sunshine Network. Tim Couch. Hands off to McLaren. And number 52, Dwayne Thomas, is in on the stop uh, for Florida. Keep Kelsey also in on the tackle. Kentucky looking at a third down and eight. Wildcats have only scored two touchdowns all season long. This is their fourth game. They scored two touchdowns in their opener and have not scored in their last two ball games. And that man right there is under a lot of pressure up in the bluegrass state. Coach Curry's got a lot of pressure on him, and you know the Gators have started to put in some of that second unit uh, defensive football team. And there you see a hole that's going to be called against the Wildcats, going to bring this play back. And McLaren had picked up first down yardage. Peterson and Showers made the tackle, but referee Doyle Jackson is uh, making the call, and it will go against the Wildcats. So Kentucky's best play from scrimmage is going to come back. Foul is holding by the offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Still third down. Bill Curry, a man of uh, great integrity, outstanding character, but just has not been able to get this football program into a winning mode. Now in his seventh year as the head coach, well, he's got some young talent that uh, has potential, and the key is trying to get it out of them and trying to get them all on the same page. You can't make mistakes like they're making and expect to be a good football team. Third down again. Couch's pass intended for Jesuma Sims is incomplete. And uh, Tim was just under a little bit too much pressure to have enough time to set that play up. Well, Jesuma Sims came open as he beat Anton Lott, but uh, it was just... Ball was thrown early by Tim Couch. Had to get rid of it early and just a little air throw because he had him open. Sort of short armed it. Jimmy Carter will punt the ball again. This will be his fifth punt of the game. End over in Anthony has a lot of room in front of him uh, to the short kick but he slips and falls at the 44 yard line of Kentucky and this is the kind of field position that more that Florida has enjoyed all day long Carter has not had an especially good day punting the ball that was a 36 yard punt with a 10 yard return only a 26 net for the Wildcats and it's just been a long first half for Bill Curry and this Wildcat football team. Well Jimmy Carter's had several punts blocked earlier this year. He's been their most potent weapon being that you know, this offense has not been able to sustain any drives and uh, you see him today worried about getting a block and he's trying to kick it out of there in a hurry. He's just not getting good depth and hang time on it. No relation to the former president of the United States by the way. Even though they are both Georgia natives. Werfel with all day to throw the football. And he connects with Jamie Richardson. Lehman Boyd on the stop. After a gain of uh, about five yards on first and ten. Here you see Jamie Richardson out of the slot position, just going down, setting down, finding the open area, making the catch, and then trying to do something with it after the catch. As you see Lamont Boyd coming in for the tackle. 
Werfel throws it out to the left side to Green this time, and Jock has Green has the ball at the 29-yard line. Hiles on the tackle for Kentucky. That'll be another Florida first down as the Gators just move the ball at will in the first half of this game. It's just tough to stop an offensive football team with this much power. When you can run the ball, you can throw the ball, you've got probably the best quarterback in the entire nation. This is a very high-profile offense that Steve Furrier has here today. Danny putting up some uh, Heisman-like numbers today. This is Fred Taylor to the 20-yard line. Hiles again on the stop. A nine-yard gain for Fred Taylor. Well, Danny Werfel has thrown 119 consecutive passes without an interception. As we look at uh, a replay. Here you see Fred Taylor, fresh legs, just getting his first uh, opportunity to play this ball game. Uh, been out for four ball games, and you know he's sorely, sorely missed playing. And you can expect him to run wild if given the opportunity here today. Young man out of Bell Blade, Florida. Taylor. Breaking tackle to the 10. Fred Taylor will not be denied the end zone on that run. And the Gators tack on another six. Well, that's a young man from Bell Glen, as I said just a few moments ago, that's a tad hungry, and he wants to do something great. Wants this offensive football team to know that he wants to be a part of it. He wants to move back up that ladder as one of the tailbacks. Just good, strong running as he runs through arm tackles and just drives into the end zone. Fred Taylor, junior from Belgley, gives Florida a 33 to nothing lead. And the extra point by Edmiston, his 94th consecutive made point after attempt gives the Gators a 34 to nothing lead. There you see the score and we're still about halfway through the second quarter from the swamp and the Gators lead 34 to nothing. Fred Taylor first touchdown run of the season. Let's get another look at it. just a good tough running. As you can see there's several defenders that have a shot at him but he would not be denied. He smells that end zone and he's going to get in there one way or another. Just good tough running by Fred Taylor. Fred only a couple of carries but look at that per carry average. That was his 14th career touchdown run at Florida. A product of uh, Bell that Bell Glade area the big lake area. Better known as the muck. They call it there. At Okeechobee, Cluiston, Belgrade area. Has, Mahoki has produced a lot of great, great athletes through the years. Let's check with Larry Vitale. All right, David. We told you about Tico Brown and the sprained knee. That uh, injury is quite severe. In fact, Tico is going to miss several weeks for the Florida Gators. As a result, a key guy to watch the rest of this game and for the coming weeks will be Mike Harris. He's a fourth year junior from Buholtz High School right here in Gainesville. Number 13 in the Florida secondary. Now the free safety. He really has to raise his level of play to keep that secondary as solid as it has been for the Gators. Thanks Larry. I don't think that'll be a problem. Harris uh, a quality player an experienced player. He started five games in his Florida career. This is the 30th game that he has played in at this level. So. I think number 13 ought to be up to the task because Demetrik Jackson, a backup strong safety, makes the tackle. And really, that's uh, that's where the depth comes in handy, Matt. You get a player as good as Tico Brown going down, and then you can slide a guy like Mike Harris, number 13 you're looking at, into the lineup and really not notice uh, much, if any, difference at all. All right. He, he, he has all the experience that's necessary. The only thing that you question is, will he sit in the middle and play the defense that Bobby Stoops has installed, giving himself a chance to come up with some big plays. Johnny Rutledge creating havoc in the Kentucky backfield, forced the fumble, but it's out of bounds, and the Wildcats retain possession. Well, this Florida football team, they go after the football, whether it's the linebackers trying to strip the ball out of, uh, of the back's hand on the run, or if the ball's in the air, and they're going after it for the interception. Here you see Johnny Rutledge coming in, and McLaurin, has some running room, but he just comes out and snatches the ball out. Good tackling. 
There's Johnny Rutledge, another Bell Glade product. All Southeastern Conference freshman a year ago. Great athletes have been coming out of that area since, uh, at least since you've been playing ball back in the 70s right now. For quite some years, at one point, uh, the Bell Glade, Pihokee, South Bay area had approximately seven, eight guys in the NFL. Suma Sims on the reception brings the ball out to the 25-yard line. Harris, number 13, made the tackle for Florida. But that will not be enough for a Kentucky first down, and the Wildcats again will have to turn the ball over to the fun and gun. Here's another look at it as Florida's sitting back in a comfortable zone, and then you see Demetrius Jackson coming up, the first one to get there, and, he, and then here comes that entire Gator defense. Jimmy Carter back to punt the ball once again for Kentucky. Nice high kick this time, and Anthony will fair catch the football at the 41-yard line. 35-yard kick, but no return that time as Carter got a lot more air underneath it than uh, his previous punts. Has to be a very discouraging afternoon for, for Bill Curry and this Kentucky football team. We still have a lot of time left. And, uh, you know, Tennessee was down 35 to nothing last week. A lot sooner than Kentucky is, but you feel like well, they this had, Kentucky team is not capable of doing what well, Tennessee did last Manning, week. Well, they had Peyton Manning, and uh, we, as we saw last week, Peyton Manning is a good field general that has a tremendous arm. Not that this kid, Tim Couch, does not, but I don't think he has the supporting cast. Spurrier comes with the no-back set on first down, and Werfel is corralled and taken down by Chris Ward. Another big play for Ward. That's his second tackle. Cooper Carlisle had some problems with Ward. Coming from the outside, another look. Well, this is where the Gators could have some problems if uh, Mo Collins doesn't get things worked out as Cooper Carlisle gets beat here by Chris Ward. And Chris Ward's been giving uh, Carlisle fits all day. Again, no backs. Hilliard on the reception to the 48-yard line of the Wildcats, and that should be good for a Florida first down. The Gators uh, coming up to the line without a huddle again. Spurrier's got the fast break attack in on this sequence. Three men wide to the right, two men wide to the left. No backs, no tight ends. And Werfel connects again with Hilliard to the 34-yard line of Kentucky. Well, David, that's just simple. We found something we like. Uh, we're going to isolate Ike Hilliard, take him down through the zone, and let him find the open spot. And we're going to play pitch and catch. And that's what you see here with Werfel and Ike Hilliard just pitch and catch. Ike finding the soft spot in the zone, and Werfel finding him. No huddle again for Werfel. And this one is intercepted. Keo Wilson on the pickoff. And Wilson intercepting Werfel for the first time this season. We've got a penalty flag down. But there's a flag down. Let's wait. It would be Danny Werfel's first interception of the year. Let's see if it stands. Kentucky players are pointing toward the Florida side of the ball. We take another view. Here you see Danny trying to fit it in and just slightly overthrew Ike and Wilson is sitting back there for the easy pick. And there you see Donnie Young coming in for the stop. That is Wilson's first career interception okay. as a Wildcat. Uh, and Danny Werfel's first interception thrown this year. That breaks a string which uh, had been a school record. 122 consecutive passes attempted without an interception. A school record. Werfel broke the old mark set by Wayne Peace. Kentucky with the football and Norman Mason, the, the receiver. Reggie McGrew on the stop for the Florida Gators. Tim Couch does a pretty good job here, David, of uh, play action pass as he fakes to the tailback going through the middle, slowing down that Gator front wall 
giving himself a little bit more time to throw the football. That might be the best first down yardage Kentucky has managed in the game. They are second down and five. Counts gives to McLaren, and McLaren is close to a first down. James Bates on the tackle. Well, the interception seems to have breathed a little bit of life into this Kentucky football team. Well, Wildcats picked up a first down. That is their first first down of the game. It comes with uh, about three minutes to play in the first half. Well, anytime you come up with a big defensive stop, uh, hopefully it will instill some life in your offense. And they're doing a better job of executing here. Once again, a little play action pass. Trying to go out to Isaac Curtis the third. Curtis almost made a a great catch out there the son of the former Cincinnati Bengals all time leading receiver. Very surprising to see uh, Ike Junior as a uh, tight end versus the wide receiver. His dad was a great sprinter and one of the better receivers in the NFL for many many years with the Cincinnati Bengals. That's tight end Terrace Ross making his way toward the Florida locker room. Kentucky is second down and 10 at their own 38 yard line. McLaren gets the handoff. Ed Chester was uh, in on the tackle along with Keith Kelsey, number 41. McLaren had a little daylight here, but uh, the gap closed up quickly. Well, that's the quickness of this Gator defense as you see Kelsey. Coming in, making the tackle. Good looking freshman from Newberry, Florida, just outside of Gainesville. Third down play for the Wildcats. And Couch is surrounded and almost dropped, but he did a good job of getting the ball away. Let's see if they call intentional grounding. Cameron Davis had him wrapped up. Rounding the football called against the freshman. But Tim Couch really showed you some strength there, David, as Cameron Davis had him all wrapped up. The screen was covered, and he just used his uh, strength to throw the ball out of, out of bounds, even though he got called for the intentional grounding. But he shows all of that 6'5", 230 frame as he throws the ball, launches it out of bounds, making sure that it's not intercepted. But the official called it on him. Bill Curry trying to get uh, an explanation. Well, a year ago, Couch was throwing uh, passes against high school competition in Kentucky for Leslie County High School and certainly faced nothing to prepare him for what he has seen in the first half today at the Swamp. Carter really drills this one. Anthony from his 28. Excellent coverage by the Wildcats. A Rulogen on the stop after the 44 yard kick and a nine yard return. Sham Seldin Arulogen. Coming up at halftime, we'll uh, chat with the Dean of the College of Engineering at the University of Florida, Dr. Wynn Phillips. Take a look at first half stats and uh, view a few of these many University of Florida highlights from the first half of the game. It's 34 to nothing, Florida leading Kentucky. But David, I want to go back and figure out uh, how long did you stay up last night uh, studying that name? It uh, only took a couple of hours. <laughs> Shamseldine Arulogen. Arulogen. And I'm not even sure about that as Eli Williams gets an opportunity to carry the football. Steve Spurrier shuttling those tailbacks in. And they're all looking good. Williams, Jackson, and now Taylor. And you still have McCaslin and Sanders sitting on the bench. So you see Elijah Williams just doing a tremendous job of following his blockers. And that's what all these guys do well. They read the head of the, the blocker and then 
gets to that side. Riedel Anthony with another reception. Mark Jacobs, number 99. Another Florida product in that Kentucky defense out of Shalimar, Choctahatchee High School. He made the tackle on Anthony, but Riddell is having himself quite an afternoon. That was his sixth reception in the first half, almost 100 yards. Williams, the carrier. Eli Williams inside the 35 to the 33 of Kentucky. Inside of a minute to play in the first half. Well, Elijah Williams is probably the quickest of the three backs, and you know he even does a better job of reading the head of the blockers. As you can see, watch when he comes up on Richardson. He sees Richardson's head out inside, and he just cuts back inside of him. I kill your to the 31. That should be good for a first down. Van Hiles on the stop. David, what Danny is doing, he's coming up with the trips, and every time the slot receiver is uncovered, he's just audibling and just stepping back, throwing it out here to Ike Hilliard or Riddell Anthony, knowing that they can do more with the football if he gets it to them in a hurry. Werfel trying to throw deep for Hilliard. There was a collision at about the 10-yard line between Hiles and Hilliard. The, the crowd down there in that north end zone thought there might be a flag thrown. Oh, that's Jamie Richardson, rather. 18 rather than 19. Well, he tried to go to Jamie Richardson. And the Gators use a timeout with 16 seconds to go in the half. Well, well. Continue that thought when we come back. Florida leading 34 to nothing. And we'll be back in just a moment. It has been all Florida in the first half, and the Gators uh, threatening to score again with 16 seconds to go in the second quarter. Third down and 10. Orful has had great protection all day. Anthony, he stepped out of bounds inside the one. Riedel thought he had another touchdown. I thought he was in. Uh, he, he had a tough call there. He did everything he could to try and get in. Good job of, one, of catching the ball and running with the football. These guys just do an unbelievable job. Werfel's looking for Riddell Anthony all the way. Catches him coming across. And then Riddell just turns on the speed, knowing where that goal line is as he dives forward. That's a good call by the official. Good call. He went out on the one-inch line. Very close. The ball must cross the goal line. Orphel's going to try and throw it into the end zone. It's deflected, almost intercepted, and incomplete. Jeff Snenniger, I think, is the man that deflected the ball. And then number 53, Ben Bird, almost had, him, had himself an interception. Actually, Werfel turned into a defender there to keep Bird from picking it off. Once again, Danny Werfel shows his head headedness as he sees that this ball is batted up and there's a potential interception, and he goes in and strips it out, a la Joe Theismann in the Super Bowl 17. One second to play in the first half. Werfel. Touchdown, Florida. Eli Williams brings it into the end zone. Danny Werfel saw a crease in the defense. Check the play to get Elijah Williams back to the left side. Easy touchdown. Time has expired in the first half as Florida scores on the final play of the second quarter to take a 40 to nothing lead over Kentucky. Eli Williams out of Milton, Florida, the junior. As Nat Moore mentioned a moment ago, he's uh, probably the quickest of the three tailbacks that are getting the playing time for the Gators. Edmiston's extra point is good. Mark continues to be perfect. And the Florida Gators, a 41 to nothing lead. They look like the number one team of the nation here at the Swamp today. 
Welcome back to Florida Field. The Florida Gators ranked number one in the nation lead Kentucky 41 to nothing. David Steele and Nat Moore and Nat at the top of the program we talked could the Gators have the kind of energy enthusiasm that they had last week against Tennessee? I think we've seen they want to prove today that they belong at the top of the college football world. They came out fired up. They came out doing all the things that good football teams do when they play weak teams. That's take control of the game early, and that's what they did in the first quarter. We have a lot of highlights to choose from. Let's take a look at a couple as Danny Werfel had an excellent first half. Now. Well, here he's looking for Ike Hilliard coming across the middle on one of those crossing routes, and Ike Hilliard shows you why he's one of the best receivers in college football today as he turns on the afterburners and gets into the end zone for an easy touchdown. That is Hilliard's 23rd career touchdown reception for the Florida Gators. Florida's defense making big plays again today. Well, Tim Couch got his baptism here today as he scrambles out of the pocket using some of that mobility, but he's suckered by Fred Worry as he steps in front of uh, Yeast and picks off this pass to give the Gators good field position. Danny Werfel again connecting this time with Riddell Anthony who had a brilliant first half for Florida. Well this is just a sweet pass here by Danny Werfel as he throws it up and over just a perfect pass to Riddell where only he could catch it. Now Florida got Fred Taylor back today for the first time this season and here's what the junior from Belle Glade was able to do in the well, second quarter. Well this is a big weapon that they've been missing and hitting him back is only going to make this uh, offense more potent. The Florida with that three tailback attack. And Eli Williams scored a touchdown late in the second quarter. Just good blocking at the point of attack as you see the small back going in from one yard out right before the half. Jackson and Taylor and Williams quite a triumvirate in that Florida backfield as the Gators have dominated the Kentucky Wildcats. 41 to nothing is the score at the end of the first half. And the numbers just back up what we're talking about Nat. total domination by Florida. It's just great domination by the defense uh, not giving up a one first down the entire first half. We're at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. And the swamp uh, filled to capacity. Watching number one ranked Florida take on the Kentucky Wildcats. And the Gators trying to make a statement here in the first half of this football game. And I think they've done a pretty good job of it. Florida with uh, a Southeastern Conference game next week against the Arkansas Razorbacks on the road. And then the LSU Tigers come in here. The Florida field two weekends from now. Matt Teague kicks off to start the second half. And again, Teague has really gotten his leg into the football. Big day for Matt Teague. I think he's kicked all but one kickoff into the end zone and forced uh, Kentucky into a touchback. Well, the any time you get uh, a weapon of this magnitude that will help your defense by making sure that the team always starts from their own 20 yard line, that's a big weapon. And this is an ugly graphic for Kentucky. Interception and then punch right on down the line. The Wildcats come with their other quarterback uh, to start the third quarter, Billy Jack Haskins. And there you see number seven, a junior from Paducah, Kentucky, who started the first three games of the season for Kentucky. And uh, his numbers uh, had been unimpressive, but... This Wildcat offense, very inexperienced in the offensive line, has uh, inexperienced receivers, and they just have not had uh, an opportunity to really get anything rolling offensively so far this year. Haskins on the throw and a nicely designed play, and the ball is caught by McCord, the freshman from LaGrange, Georgia. Let's check with Larry Patel. Got a situation where Shea Showers is in at free safety. We mentioned Mike Harris is the backup to Tico Brown, but Shea has much more playing experience than does Mud Harris and is a better cover guy. So Florida right now, Shea Showers in at free safety. Lawrence Wright at strong safety. All right, Larry Haskins on the option breaks free from a tackler, but is knocked down at the 32-yard line by Cameron Davis. But that was a nicely designed play. Haskins, he comes out here, I think, with a lot of confidence, perhaps a little more able to deal with this Florida field crowd and uh, playing the number one team in the country, Nat. Well, he's got a little bit more experience, but he also has quick feet. He's a little bit shorter, has the ability to come down the, the line and read and read the, the 
the, the uh, linebacker who he must option off uh, whether he's going to pitch the ball. Big hit by James Bates on Raymond McLaren. And the Wildcats look at a third down coming up. Third down and nine for Kentucky. Here's how you fill the from the linebacker slot. Here you see the middle linebacker James Bates coming in and putting the big stop on McLaren. First possession of the third quarter. Kentucky third down and nine. Askins pass is incomplete. Intended for Kevin Coleman, the sophomore, another Floridian out of Niceville, Florida. Unable to bring in the pass, and the Wildcats uh, look a lot like uh, they did in the first half, whether it's Haskins, the quarterback, or Couch, the quarterback on that sequence, although they did pick up one first down and complete a pass. Well, they picked up a first down, David, but they look a little crispier. They look like they're getting up to the line of scrimmage. They know what they want to try and get accomplished, even though they weren't able to get it done. Carter back to punt the ball. And this will be his eighth punt of the game. Peters had a pretty good rush on. Jacques Green. Stays on his feet. I don't know how he got through that crease, but look out now. Jacques Green, and there's nobody near him except blue shirted Gators. Touchdown, Florida. Another tremendous run by one of those wide receivers on a punt return this time. There you see as he goes into the hedges, giving the high fives to the fans. Tremendous run by Jacquez Green, the fastest gator on this football team. Well, this is worth another look. Well, he goes to his right, and he, he's really stopped up here, but he refuses to go down as he breaks the tackle, and then he starts looking for his friend. He's looking for those blue shirts, and then he's got an escort. As you see, Lawrence Wright leading him down the sideline. Tremendous run by Jaquez. A 66-yard punt return for a touchdown for Jaquez Green. Another extra point hammered home by Edmiston. And the Florida Gators uh, score with a special team play early in the third quarter. It is 48 to nothing. Services, technology that sets you free. Well, there you have it. It is uh, still early in the third quarter. Florida has handed another touchdown on a punt return, 66 yards in length by sophomore Jacques Green. Matt Teague will kick off again for the Florida Gators. And once again, Teague has hammered it through the end zone. Kentucky with poor field position all day long, and one of the big reasons is because of the job that guy right there, number 43, Matt Teague, has done. Here's another look at the uh, return by Green. Kez is doing a good job. He's trying to get outside around the left side, but sees that all the white shirts, and then he just starts back to his right and shows that tremendous speed as he outruns all of the Wildcat defenders. Well, when Lehman Boyd was unable to bring him down, Boyd had both hands on him and uh, appeared to be ready to make the tackle. When Boyd didn't do that, Green had a chance to cut back to the other side of the field. It was all over. McLaren had some daylight. Bates made the tackle after a gain of about nine. Larry Vittell on the sideline, what have you got? Well, David, the touchdown by Jacquez Green on that great punt return had to bring a smile to the face of every Gator, particularly on the medical staff. This is a kid who suffered a dislocated hip in the Fiesta Bowl. Depending on the MRI exam, that might have been career ending. He battled back from that, was ready for spring long before on schedule, and here he is getting a punt return in the swamp, the first for the Gators in a decade. Well, that's right, Larry. Ricky Nateel is the last Gator to return a punt for a touchdown. Billy Jack Haskins avoiding the rush. And that pass is caught. A nice reception by Quentin McCord, a freshman from LaGrange, Georgia. Kentucky has only its third first down of the afternoon. Anthony Lott in coverage. 
Well, Billy Jack Haskins is showing us some of the mobility and the senior leadership and experience that is, uh, excuse me, junior leadership and experience that's necessary as he dodges defenders and takes his time and able to complete the ball rather than just throwing it away. Well, you know, last year, the Gators played Kentucky and Lexington. McLaurin is dragged out of bounds at the 44-yard line, a gain of two yards. There's Tico Brown. And the word on Tico is he'll be out for probably about a month, maybe a little bit longer. A sprained knee. Sprained left knee, and Tico Brown is going to be out of action for about a month. And there's the uh, information we referred to a moment ago. Ricky Nathiel returned to punt against Mississippi State in 1994. Uh, so more than uh, more than 10 years ago, 12 seasons ago, the last Florida player returning a punt for a touchdown. But talking about uh, Billy Jack Haskins, he came off the bench in Lexington last year and uh, really ignited Kentucky's offense for the first time in that game. Last year, he sat behind a quarterback by the name of Jeff Speedy. And Speedy played the first three quarters. Haskins came in and went five for five and took Kentucky into the end zone in the fourth quarter. Well, well Billy Jack Haskins last year completed over 60% of his passes and this year he was going at a clip of 45% and that's just not good enough so they wanted to give Tim Couch a shot at it and you know, he wasn't able to get the job done so they're back with Billy Jack. Haskins feeling the heat tasting the turf back at the 35 yard line. Cameron Davis has been uh, in that Kentucky backfield for much of the afternoon. Well, Cameron Davis has been feeling the pressure of Willie Cohen's trying to take his job away, and he's showing Steve Spur that he wants to be out there. He wants to be the number one guy. As you see, Mike Moulton, the entire defensive uh, line, there in the backfield there. There's Jacquez Green, and there's Jimmy Carter, who has been one of the busiest individuals on the field today. His ninth punt of the afternoon. Jimmy Carter will have to soak his left leg in the whirlpool today after this ball game. Great move by Green. Look out if he turns the corner. Goes again. Gone. Back to back could it be. One man to beat. And Jacques Cav Green is going to do it. Back to back punt returns for touchdown at Florida Field. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That is just tremendous open field running by a receiver with the football. He almost ran out of gas. <laughs> After he beat the last guy, I thought he might not make it to the goal line. Well, he just he decided there, David, to take the long route. He could have went down that left sideline and decided to reverse his field once again and go back to the right. That was a tremendous move on that first would-be tackler, and then he just breaks out. It's like he's got that extra sense of knowing where the tacklers would be and then picking up his blocker and watch him cut back and go all the way across the field, picking up more blockers, gliding into the end zone. He's out of gas. And he is still down underneath the goal post, unable to get off the field. The official says, are you okay? And uh, Jacques says, I'm not sure. <laughs> What was that, 79 yards after a 66-yard punt return for a touchdown? I tell you, you know, you look at a guy like Riddell Anthony who is rated as one of the best punt returners in the country, and you got a Jaquez Green that's behind him. Riddell goes out, takes the second half off, and Jaquez runs two back for a touchdown. Incredible. Gator trainer Chris Patrick giving Green a helping hand in the crowd. In the swamp, a standing ovation for number five, Jacquez Green, a sophomore who has really put on a show in this third quarter at Florida Field. By the way, it's 54 to nothing. <laughs> Not only is it 54 to nothing, we've got nine minutes left to go in the third quarter. And uh, the offense has still not hit the field. We've scored 14 points with that extra point there. All right, another extra point for Edmiston. That'll give him, what, 97 in a row in his career? We'll be back. Well, there's the happy but exhausted 
number five for the Florida Gators, Jacquez Green. And here's why he's happy and exhausted, Nat. Well, he just continually finds his blocks. You see Fred Weary getting a big block here. You've got uh, Willie Jackson out front. And now he comes back across. And here coming into your pitcher, Mike Harris, number 27, with a big block. He had that piano on the back that last 10 yards, though, didn't he? Look at this. First time in the history of Florida football. Well, if you're going to duplicate or take a record away from Ricky Gnatiel, you might as well do it in, in, in style. And he's done it here today with two returns for touchdowns. Theo Wilson tempted, but uh, decides to down another kick by Matt Teague. What a game for Teague. Kentucky brings the ball out to the 20 again. Be sure to catch Florida football with Steve Spurrier right here on Sunshine Network each Sunday at noon following breakfast with the Gators. Coach Steve Spurrier reviews the previous day's game, looks ahead to the Gators' next matchup. Florida football with Steve Spurrier Sundays at noon on Sunshine Network. Billy Jack. And the pass is completed to tight end Chad Spencer, but he is really hammered by Peterson, the man who's getting uh, some playing time here. A lot of second team defenders on the field for Florida right now. You see good blocking at the right side as you see Chad Spencer faking the block and coming off as a safety valve. And here come Peterson in making the tackle. Good blocking by McCord to try and pick up a defender to give Spencer some extra running room. Five yards on the play. Haskins has engineered Kentucky uh, to a couple of first downs in the third quarter. McLaurin is hit right at the line by Ed Chester. That'll be a, probably a loss of about a yard. We'll mark it at about the 23-yard line. Well, David, Kentucky comes out with this double tight end trying to run the football. And, you know, against this big front, uh, the, the defensive uh, front of this Gator football team, that's just impossible. you got great linebacker play with tremendous speed, and there's just no way you're going to run the football up the middle. There you see Ed Chester, who is the lone returning starter from last year's football team, that uh, he anchors the middle of that defensive line. He got a lot of snaps last year as a freshman out of Spring Hill to Florida. Kentucky, a third down and five, and Haskins. Oh, he's in big trouble, and down he goes. That's the linebacker, Keith Kelsey, the freshman, redshirt freshman from Newberry, who has been on, on some big plays today, Matt Moore. Well, the second team, the second team defense are getting their shot. They're getting a chance to play early in the ball game. And here you see Keith Kelsey coming in for his sack. Kentucky's offensive line has just not gotten the job done. And we have a new man returning punch. Jamie Richardson. Oh, and the crowd sensing that this one might pop all the way. A big gasp of air. You can almost feel the air being sucked out of the stadium when Richardson darn near turned the corner. Well, we had a flag down, and I think this one's coming back anyhow. 20-yard return, though, by Jamie Richardson. I wonder if a team has ever returned three consecutive punts for a touchdown. Well, they came very close on that one as a uh, battle turned up field, and Fred Worry came back and put a big block on Sneedgard. Show me right back up here. In inverted play. Oh. That was a no good call. call. They, yeah. they, they at first threw the flag, but Fred Worry did a good job of getting his head out in front on Snead guard, so it was a good block, and the officials picked the flag up. All right, we have a new Gator quarterback, senior Brian Schottenheimer. So uh, we've seen the last of Danny Werfel today. He had full game type stats, though, in the first two quarters. And Brian Schottenheimer, the backup quarterback, now calls signals the Gators. 14 points already on the board. Oh, here's a big hole for Fred Taylor. A flag down. Taylor to the five. Taylor out of bounds at the two. There's a flag down. Looks like they're going to bring this one back. I think they got Jerome Evans. Caught Jerome Evans for a little holding as Fred Taylor came out the backside once again and was headed for that goal line. Foul is holding by the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first down. 
On the right side of your screen, you see Fred Taylor coming out of there. They called Jerome Evans for the hole. I don't know where that was. Oh, take that. Now here's the punt return and the block by Fred Weary right there. Yeah, that was a great field back block by Fred Weary picking up Needgard, giving Battle a little bit more room to run for a few extra yards. Schottenheimer's pass is completed to Fred Taylor. Littleton Ward, Didi Ali on the stop for Kentucky. Brian Schottenheimer, Marty's boy. Has not had a lot of snaps at Florida, but uh, I guarantee you he has served a valuable internship under Steve Spurrier. Here's his numbers this season to date. Brian has aspirations of one day being a coach and felt like uh, if he wanted to learn defense, he could talk to his dad. But if he wanted to learn offense, this was the place to come. To be under the Steve Spurrier system. And he's getting his opportunity today to gain some playing experience as a fifth-year senior. Brian knows this offense inside and out. Knows it as well as Werfel or Spurrier. So there's no question about his ability to, uh, to direct this Florida offense should anything happen to Danny Werfel. And that's the, the big thing coming into this year, David, is that you know, Brian had not taken that many snaps, and they want to try and get him as much experience as possible, and today is a good day for that, being that we've got another quarter and a half where Brian gets to play. Well, I think we might see uh, Johnson, too, later on today. The pass is completed to the tight end for Maine Allen, only his second reception of the year. And his 10th reception of his uh, career, the big senior from Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, he was a happy camper last week to be able to go home and knock off the Tennessee Volunteers. It's just here he comes across. He's just looking for the hole. Finds the hole, sits down. Schottenheimer gets the ball to him. First down. What I, li what I like about this Gator offensive passing attack is all these guys know how to find that open spot in the zone. And as long as Kentucky try and play them in a zone, there's no way that they're going to stop him. Here you see Jamie Richardson just can't get outside. Lamont Smith on the stop. Number 45, a junior from Cincinnati, Ohio. I've got to talk to Stevens and, and get the name of this play because I like the way he does this, where he set the trips to the strong side, wide side of the field, and then puts the receiver on the weak side in motion and then hands it off as if he's a tailback to try and get wide. Another creative way of trying to get the ball outside. And off to Taylor, and Kentucky's defense is swarming. One of the rare times that they really put a lot of helmets on the football today. Chris Ward led the defensive attack for the Wildcats. That'll bring up a third down from the 20-yard line, third and nine. Well, let's, let's not give the Wildcats too much credit. You know, the Gators tried to run a little draw there, David, and there was no one with pressure in the backfield, so they were there when the draw showed up. Uh, well, we're trying to be nice to them. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Taylor sweeping outside. Moves the ball to the 16-yard line. Ward was there to make another stop in Florida Wolf bring on the field goal team with three minutes 41 seconds to play in the third quarter. Brian Schottenheimer coming off the field after uh, picking up one first down with that Florida offense. Edmiston has kicked a couple of field goals already today. He is four of six for the season. Matt Teague places it down. A 33-yard field goal by Edmiston is good. And uh, and three more to that Gator tally. As we go to break with the Gators on top, 58 to nothing. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium looking sharp on this Saturday afternoon in September. It's been a hot afternoon, but uh, nothing has slowed down this Florida Gator number one ranked football team. Certainly not the Kentucky Wildcats. Gators have had their way today, and they lead the Wildcats 58 to nothing with still 313 to play in the third quarter. Matt Teague kicking it deep again. Wilson will stay back there once more. You think that Teague's leg might be getting a little tired, but he keeps booming it back there. 
Florida Gators averaging almost 51 points a game. And they have not disappointed the sellout crowd on either side of the football here this afternoon. Handoff is to number 25, Derek Logan. And Logan uh, may have managed back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about it. Kentucky came out that time with three wide, and instead of throwing the football, they tried to run it once again. Uh, I just don't see any explosiveness in this uh, offense that they have. They've got some quality receivers uh, as far as speed goes, but so far they've shown us nothing here today versus this Gator de defense. Well, they have really lost the battle of the line of scrimmage. You see again Florida just neutralizing that line of scrimmage and Reggie McGrew the tackle making the stop. I bet a lot of tackles have been made by tackles and ends those on the front line today for Florida. They have just stuffed the line of scrimmage. Well the the Gators have controlled the line of scrimmage both on offense and defense. Here you see the Gators coming in converging on Number 25. That's Logan. He's a, a true freshman. They have played a lot of first year freshmen today, Kentucky. Haskins scrambling. And the pass is incomplete at the 31 yard line. It's coverage by Demetrius Jackson. Mike Harris was also in the area. Demetri Jackson had one right in his hands and he dropped it. He had an opportunity to come up with a big pick and uh, wasn't able to hang on. Haskins flirting with uh, the line of scrimmage on that pass, but I think he was behind the line. Uh, here is Carter punting for the 11th time today. Richardson is going to field the football. Trying to turn the right corner, and uh, Jamie is out of bounds across the 35 at the 37-yard line. A 48-yard punt that time for Carter with an 8-yard return by Jamie Richardson. That's Billy Jack Haskins back in the, uh, in the crowd, number 7. Kentucky trainers are looking at his right hand, I believe. Hopefully he'll be all right. That Kentucky defense coming back onto the field. They have uh, certainly had their hands full all day long with this Florida punt and gun attack. Working on the thumb and the little index finger. The Gators have Dubose and McCaslin in the backfield now. And the pass is caught beautifully by Ernie DeBose, the junior fullback from Port Charlotte. Falls in the Schottenheimer pass, and that will be close to a Florida first down. Ernie DeBose is the nephew of the great fullback that played here, Jimmy DeBose, back in the middle 70s. As you see, Schottenheimer showing a little touch, a little up and over. And Jimmy DeBose shows good athletic ability, or Ernie DeBose, excuse me, coming down with the catch. Nine yards on the play. Schottenheimer has McGriff and Kareem wide to the right. Schottenheimer throwing the ball for now. Feast Kareem and the pass is incomplete. Tremaine Martin covering. A junior out of Apopka, Florida. Well, and the Gators throw for 300 yards uh, plus. They have been very successful, and under Spurrier, that's happened quite often, 58% of the time, in fact. Whereas in the previous 83 years of Florida football, Florida football teams threw for 300-plus yards only 14 times in over 800 games. Schottenheimer will get the first down on the quarterback sneak. Out to the 49-yard line. George Massey, a freshman from Lynch, Kentucky, on the stop. Catch the eighth-ranked Gator women's soccer team against Tennessee on Sunday, September 29th at 2 p.m. Florida leads the nation in soccer attendance. So come on out to Percy Beard Stadium. Admission is free. Round 
First and ten for the Gators. This will be the final play of the third quarter. And the pass is incomplete. Schottenheimer is upset with himself. He had each Kareem open. But he also had Travis McGriff going through the middle with no one there. I think he was more upset with the fact that he missed Nafis, but he knew that he had the post pattern in the middle of the field for an easy six. Now this should be the last play of the third quarter, the handoff to the Kansas. And Eugene staying on his feet, but uh, winds up finally in the grasp of Van Hiles as time expires in the third quarter. Well, Eugene saw Green have some success with the uh, misdirection on a couple of punt returns, so he thought he'd give it a shot without success in that case. But Florida takes that huge lead. The number one ranked Gators leading Kentucky as we go to the fourth quarter. We're back at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. 15 minutes of football remaining today, and uh, number one ranked Florida certainly has done nothing to indicate that they should be anything other than the number one ranked football team in the country. Here's how Billy Jack Haskins got hurt, and uh, this would tend to hurt. Well, Keith Kelsey comes in uh, just as he releases the ball and put the headgear right on that throwing hand, and here you see him walking off as they take him to the locker room. And here's Tim Couch getting ready to re-enter for the Wildcats. Fourth period begins with Florida in possession of the football at the Gator 42-yard line. It's a third down and 16. Schottenheimer's pass intended for McCaslin is incomplete. They tried to set up the screen, but it never developed. Well, they tried to go with the middle of the screen, and with this second team offensive line in there, you've got to block them for one count and then let them go, and they just let everybody through, and Schottenheimer didn't have the time to let it go as you see him get creamed as he th releases the football. Robbie Stevenson, the forgotten man, the Maytag repairman of this football game. <laughs> Jimmy Carter has punted 11 times for Kentucky, but Stevenson has... Uh, Nary one still right here. Well, he picked a good time to shank one. Get the team up 58 to nothing. He did the job last week in Knoxville with the game on the line. There's a 32-yard punt by Robbie Stevenson. But, boy, you can't say enough about what he did last week in Tennessee, kicking the Gators out of trouble from uh, their own end of the field on several occasions. Florida 58, Kentucky nothing. We're in the fourth quarter early. Well, earlier today before this uh, football game between Florida and Kentucky, Gatorade and Sunshine Network had a big promotion. Gatorade, one of uh, the great sponsors on Sunshine Network, teaming up with uh, the folks at Sunshine, having a lot of fun before the kickoff of today's football game outside the stadium. This is quite an atmosphere on a Saturday afternoon. Doesn't get much better than Gainesville on a Saturday with the, the Gators playing football. Mike Peterson on the stop. Don't forget to look for specially marked Gatorade with the rush to the sidelines for a chance to win tickets to the SEC championship instantly. For more details or free entry, call 1-800-88-GATOR. Gatorade Thirst Quencher, life is a sport, drink it up. Well, you think the head ball coach uh, has liked what he's seen today, Nat? Well, he's got to be pretty happy. Offensively, they came out uh, and was able to put some points on the board early and often. Orful retired after two quarters with big numbers. Anthony White, the ball carrier. Dwayne Thomas, number 52, a junior from Jacksonville on the stop for Florida. Orful's uh, numbers in the first half, 21 of 31, almost 300 yards, 279 yards, three touchdowns. He did throw his first interception of the year. That's what Danny has been able to do for the past couple of years is not only complete the football, but also to stay away from the turnover and uh, you know, for that to be the first interception in 121 throws is a tremendous feat. Couch showing great arm strength, but overthrowing freshman Quentin McCord. Good coverage over there by Showers, the senior from Alachua. And uh, guess what? 
Kentucky's going to punt the football again. Jay Showers is in great position. Now, you might want to hide the women and children for this number here. 425 total yards to 56. Jamie Richardson on the punt return and out of bounds. He goes at the 38-yard line, a 41-yard punt. And an eight-yard return by Richardson. 13 minutes, five seconds remaining in the football game. And Florida will take over. And we'll have a new quarterback. We'll tell you about it when we come back. It's been a pleasant afternoon in Florida. I feel a little on the warm and muggy side, but uh, this is September in Central Florida. Here's what happened uh, just after the punt return by Jamie Richardson. Richardson threw the ball into the face of Woods, and Woods came back at him. And then Bill Curry said, son, we don't do that here. Uh, if things are not bad enough, he'll, he'll afford those kind of penalties, as you see McCaslin being tackled once again in the backfield. 15-yard penalty for a personal foul against Kentucky. So the Gators have the ball near midfield. Here's Doug Johnson. The third Gator quarterback of the afternoon, the freshman from right here in Gainesville out of Buholtz High School, professional baseball player. Has played sparingly so far this year. He'll throw for the first time this afternoon. Johnson displaying that strong arm, and the pass is almost picked off in an incomplete tenant for Richardson. Van Hiles had a chance for it at the 10 yard line. Well, Jamie Richardson had had a couple steps on Van Hiles, but uh, the ball hung and Van Hiles had an opportunity to come down with the pick. But I think the cast, he's got a soft cast on his right hand, made it impossible for him to come down with the football. Look how open Jamie Richardson is. As you see, Van Hiles goes up and that right hand with the cast on, he's not able to come down with the football. Just can't grab and hold on. Johnson connects with McGriff. First down for the Gators at the 33-yard line of Kentucky. The tackle was made by a Rulogen. And Florida. Moves those sticks up the field. Kentucky has, what, three first downs in this football game? I think three total. Three is about it. As you see right here, Travis McGriff getting open. As Jamie Richardson just does a tremendous job. Throws a beautiful ball when he's got time to step up and throw the football. Being a baseball player, he knows that once you can push and throw, you can get a lot on it. Johnson pitches the ball to McCaslin, Eugene McCaslin. Across the 30 to the 28-yard line, Mike Schellenberger. The senior playing for Pryan out there now, number 49. Been a long day for him and that Kentucky defense. Well, Eugene McCaslin is another guy that Steve really wanted to get a little bit more playing time. He's looked real good during the time that uh, Fred Taylor has been out of the lineup, but Fred Taylor is back, and it's going to be tough finding playing time for Eugene in big ball games. Johnson's pass is complete to McCaslin at the 25. Didi Ali, number 22 out of Mariana, Florida. In on the stop, uh, former walk-on. Excellent student in electrical engineering. Made the SEC academic honor roll last year. Well, the University of Kentucky might not be a great football team, but uh, Bill Curry's done a good job of making sure that most of his athletes graduate and do the right thing while they're there in school. And... Uh, you look at the program that he's got there, it's, uh, they've not been able to win, but as far as what the kids are really there for, getting an education, they do stress, stress that. McCaslin, the ball carrier, almost breaking free. The tackle again made by Arulogen. That's got to be the fourth time today that Ju Eugene McCaslin has been brought down <laughs> by the leg with a guy holding on for dear life as he broke the line of scrimmage. Hits the hole real quick here. 
bounces off a would-be tackle, and here you see number 31 comes in. He just grabs on, and he holds on for dear life, hoping he can get some help. Another first down for the Gators inside of the Kentucky 20-yard line. Johnson's pass is caught. Touchdown, Florida. Jamie Richardson, a freshman from Tallahassee, his first career, the University of Florida touchdown. Where well, there we saw that gun of Doug Johnson as he saw Jamie Richardson come open in the left in the right corner of the end zone, and he just stepped up and gunned it. I mean, this thing is on a frozen rope. It's just sip right in there. There's no time to react for the defense. Perfect throw. Jamie a little bit too exuberant. And you see the official reach back for that uh, hip pocket. Throw the flag. So the celebration penalty against Jamie Richardson. The Gators take a 64 to nothing. Dead ball, late. unsportsmanlike, against the offense. The score is good. The penalty will be on the kickoff. Doug Johnson connecting. That is his. Uh, that's his first touchdown pass. First touchdown pass of his career. Well, that's one he'll long remember. The swamp on this Saturday afternoon in September of 1996 against the Kentucky Wildcats. Collins Cooper is going to uh, attempt the extra point. A sophomore from Jacksonville. And Cooper drills it. He keeps that Gator streak alive. Edmiston uh, getting a break. After a long day of kicking extra points at the swamp, it's 65 to nothing. Florida, number one in the country, flexing its muscles today against the Kentucky Wildcats. 9.55 to play on this beautiful evening now in Gainesville, Florida. Many of the sellout crowd have uh, departed, but surprisingly, many have remained. Gators have always loved a good blowout. They've seen one here today at the swamp. Keo Wilson on the return from the 20 yard line. And he brings it out to the 35. After the celebration penalty, he kicking off from the 20 yard line. Matt uh, was not able to get that one quite back there into the end zone. Another look at the touchdown. Matt. Just a little fake to the fullback and then a good step, stepping up and throwing the ball, just drilling it, getting all of his weight behind the throw. Doug Johnson, pretty good freshman quarterback himself. Let's go to Larry Vitell on the sideline. Well, David, as Kentucky starts this series, you look at 65-0. Florida last year set an SEC record for points per game. They're ahead of that pace this year, averaging close to 55 right now. The problem for opponents right now is they knew the Gators had a great offense, but Florida's found new ways to score. The defense has six touchdowns in the first four games, and today two punt returns. What's an opponent to do? Well, if you're Kentucky, Larry, not very much today, unfortunately, for the Wildcats. They, uh, I didn't think that they were going to score. I, I After uh, looking at what they did last week against Indiana, uh, a last-second field goal, their only points of the game, this Kentucky offense just uh, not rolling yet. Florida defensively has been forcing those turnovers, as you see by that graphic. They have been giving up uh, some yardage, but not today against the Wildcats. There's another big hit. As uh, Keith Kelsey. Kelsey's had himself quite an afternoon, number 41. He's oh. trying to get some playing time, more playing time out here today. Well, you know, basketball season is just around the corner. Get your UF men's and women's season basketball tickets at UF by calling 1-800-34-GATOR. Be sure to ask about that new Gator Saver ticket package. Speaking of basketball, this quarterback, Tim Couch, was quite a basketball player in the state of Kentucky also. In fact, he might end up uh, suiting up for Rick Pitino's Wildcats, especially after this afternoon's experience in the swamp. Anthony Mitchell sacks Couch on that particular play, and uh, Kentucky will have to punt once again. There goes Mitchell off the field, and Couch coming off the other side of the field, disheveled, his shoulder pad hanging out. Well, we take another look. Well, here Tim Couch is saying, this is just not fair. You know, I, I thought college football was supposed to be more fun than this. He gets his first start. He, he gets a start here in the swamp, and he's swarmed all day by Gators. 
Jamie Richardson fielding another Carter punt. A 43 yard punt and a nine yard return by Richardson. Florida 65 in Kentucky nothing. We'll be back. Back in Gainesville, a celebration going on at the stadium today. Florida jumped on Kentucky early and has just continued to pour it on. Danny Werfel, uh, he only played the first two quarters, threw uh, three touchdown passes, 279 yards. Hand off to Eugene McCaslin. And a flag is thrown as McCaslin steps out of bounds at the 42-yard line, a gain of four. Chris Ford, a sophomore from Tallahassee, Florida, number 11 for Kentucky, made the tackle. Got the Gators for holding on that. Uh, McCaslin came out to the right side. Number 83, Jason Dean, was guilty of the hold. Foul was holding by the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Dean, a senior from Naples. That's David Nabavi, number 84, split wide to the left, and uh, Dean in the slot to the left side. Quarterback Doug Johnson on first down, pumps once and throws it deep, and this one's going to be picked off. Kentucky's second interception of the football game. And out of bounds goes Tremaine Martin. Martin out of a pop to Florida, played a couple of years of junior college football. At the City College of San Francisco, he played high school football for Chip Gerke, the fine uh, high school program in Apopka. This is just a freshman mistake where he, he never sees Tremaine Martin, and he throws it up for Graham. And there you, you got the Bobby pushing him out of bounds, keep going further. I think this is, I'm sorry, Nam, I think this is the first time Kentucky has been across the 50 in the football game, and it is. Hand off to Logan and Derek Logan inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. Jason Perry, number 63, is there to make the stop for the University of Florida. Sophomore linebacker out of Longwood. You look at Tim Couch, would love dearly to get his Wildcats on the board. Kentucky lost to Florida two years ago here at the Swamp, 73 to 7. And that game was uh, about as lopsided as this one has been. Couch optioning right. Fakes the pitch and keeps the football, and I think he's got a first down inside the 30 at the 30, or rather the 26-yard line. Tony George made the stop. Well, there we see Tim Couch uh, do a good job of turning it up on the option. They've been forcing him to keep the ball all day, and that's time he got a soft corner, and he turned it up for the first down. Big, lanky, 6'5", 230 frame. He fakes the pitch, but Tony George comes in and makes him pay. This guy is quite an athlete, Couch. He scored 60 points in a high school basketball game as a senior. Now, with the score like it is today, he might think this is a basketball game. <laughs> Couch hands the ball to Logan. Logan to the 24, Anthony Mitchell. Number 98 on the tackle for Florida. Mike Moten also there. The Gator growling today in Gainesville. Number one ranked Florida. The last time they were ranked number one in the nation was October the 10th, 1994. They played Auburn the next week. And uh, right here at the Swamp, and Auburn came from behind and really took uh, a big victory away from Florida that Saturday afternoon, 36 to 33. But... Kentucky, 96, is not Auburn of 94. They're not Auburn of 94, but, and also that ball game was one of the games where the Gators let down and uh, thought it was going to be a cakewalk. Today, they have not done that. Willie Rogers, good defensive play on Logan, and that'll bring up third down for Kentucky. They've got their field goal man getting ready to Try and get them on the scoreboard in case they don't get the uh, the first down here. It'll be third down and ten. The crowd still here in the swamp would like to see this team complete this shutout.
Couch hands off to Logan. A flag is down, and Kentucky had motion in the offensive line. This will be a five-yard penalty, and you know, they're getting to the point where they're they might be out of uh, Tobin Anderson's field goal range in a moment. David, on that last play that they attempted, uh, ball start, offense, still third down. Even though they weren't able to get it off in time, you know, it seems as if Kentucky has uh, decided to bite the bullet, and uh, they're just trying to run the clock out. Third and ten, and uh, you're running the ball up the middle. Really, even know some are you're not looking to get the first down. Third and 15. Couch's pass is complete to McCord. According to the 25 yard line, it'll be fourth down and eight. John X Nitus on the stop for Florida. Bill Curry will apparently shun the three points and go ahead and try and see if he can't uh, move the ball on down the field. Maybe get a touchdown late in the football game. Uh, Quinn McCord, the uh, receiver, the outside receiver for the Kentucky Wildcats, has a lot of heart. And that last play did a good job of coming back trying to help his quarterback as he came back to meet the ball and took the punishment. Now steps up in the pocket, throws it deep, and uh, the pass is incomplete, but there is a flag. Keel Wilson, the intended receiver, and number 38 for Florida was all over him, Demetrius Lewis. Well, the, the reason this is being called on Demetrius is that he never turned to locate the football. He was in good position, but you've got to turn and look back for the football and give the the official some indication that you're playing the ball. Here you see him just running over the receiver. That was pass interference by the defense in the end zone. 15 yards previous spot, automatic first down. And no argument from that man. See Spurrier chanting with uh, Danny Warfel on the sideline as far as defense digs in to try and protect a shutout. Logan drop at the 15 yard line and it is uh, the man that just committed the pass interference Demetrius Lewis. Well, that's how you make atonement for after you make a mistake as you come back and you make another big play to help your team out. Good job of staying at home by Lewis here so he's not full once the, the running back tried to come outside he's right there where he's supposed to be playing the defense Lewis a redshirt freshman from Decatur Georgia and counts will work from the shotgun with three and a half minutes to play oh he threw everybody to him pitches to Logan and Logan gets uh, five yards back to the 10 Mike Harris on the tackle for Florida. And it'll be third down from the 10 yard line. That play was successful simply because there was a blown assignment by Caden Walton because Rogers was there and he's supposed to take the pitch man. If he would have took the pitch man, there'd been nowhere for Tim Couch to pitch the football. Florida's defensive players on the field trying to encourage one another to tighten up here and keep Kentucky out of the end zone. Count throwing for the corner. Incomplete. And no flag. It's Lewis covering once again over there in the corner of the end zone. And he did a fine job there against Kevin Coleman. He still forgot to look back for the football. And I guarantee you, Coach Bobby Stoops, this week in practice, will be working on this where he turns and locates the football. This is the second time that he had an opportunity to intercept it if he just locates the football. As a defensive back, you've got to know where the football is at all times. All right, fourth down. Two and a half to play.
Couch had a man open at the five, and he couldn't pull it in. The pass was thrown too high for Anthony White. And Florida takes the football at the 10-yard line. The shutout is still intact. Anthony Mitchell did a great job of getting pressure on Tim Couch, forcing him to throw the ball high, where he was not able to connect with his receiver. New Florida quarterback once again, Noah Brindise will take snaps, the fourth Florida quarterback of the ball game. He's a junior out of Fort Myers. Bob Holmberg in on the tackle. There's Brindise, has only played just sparingly this season number four quarterback and that Florida offense of course not too many number four quarterbacks <laughs> ever get to play get to play on a Saturday I like the job this uh, second team offensive line is doing and because they're still opening holes giving the backs creases to run in so that they're able to pick up needed yardage to maintain possession of the football there you see another good job of running by Eugene McCaslin cutting it upfield That'll be a first down after the 22-yard line. Pretty good work by the offensive line on this play. They just do a good job of coming off the ball, pushing everybody back, giving the back room to make a decision as to where he's going to cut and run. Well, this Florida Gator football team is not going to lose any votes for number one this week. And uh, they've got Arkansas next week, LSU the week after that, then the Auburn Tigers, so three big Southeastern Conference games in a row. Followed by Georgia and Vanderbilt, South Carolina, then the big one at Florida State. Clock ticking down. Here's the rest of the schedule. Next weekend, uh, Fayetteville and then LSU and Auburn back to back. That's a nice break in the schedule for Florida to face those two teams at the Swamp, Georgia and Jacksonville. Then at Vanderbilt, home against South Carolina. And then uh, at Florida State on November 30th. And the task is to stay undefeated until that November 30th showdown in Tallahassee. Well, the Gators will get a chance to celebrate here tonight, but tomorrow they'll be right back thinking about the Arkansas game because this one is in the books. And you take them one game at a time, one play at a time, and that's how you end up playing for the national championship at the end of the year. Nick Shirali on the receiving end of that Brindise pass. Well, it doesn't matter whether you're one or two. You just want to be in one spot or the other. Right now, Florida one, Florida State two. Only 12 seconds to play in the football game as Noah Brindice walks the sideline. And taking a snap will be Billy Young, a freshman quarterback from Haines City, Florida, number six. He takes the final snap of the afternoon, and that's the end of the ball game. Florida. Steve Spurrier guiding the Gators to another victory here at the Swamp. They have been uh, just about invincible in the Spurrier era of the 1990s in this uh, arena. And it was no contest in this one. The Florida Gators, very impressive, ranked number one in the nation. And they shut out the Kentucky Wildcats. It's uh, Florida's first shutout since the Tennessee game last year in Knoxville, a 31 to nothing victory in Knoxville uh, and today it's uh, 65 to nothing the Gators over the Kentucky Wildcats well today we saw what we saw the Florida Gators do what great teams do when they get a team that they should destroy they came out and they got it done they came out and they put a thorough whooping on the Kentucky Wildcats we'll be back at the swamp right after this